Okay, this video is going to be on repairing your drill press. The most common failure you're going to have with a drill press is one day you're going to be drilling into something, you're going to let go of the handle, and it isn't going to retract by itself. And that means your spindle return spring just broke. And if you're like me and you own a rigid, well, you're going to have trouble finding one depending on the model. And that can go the same for a lot of different uh, models and manufacturers if they're too old. But don't worry about it. We're, we're not going to use that OEM spring. I'm going to show you how to fix it for, uh, you know, a few dollars more, but the parts will always be accessible. Okay, so here's the original OEM spring. This tab in the middle broke off. It used to look like that. And you think, oh, no big deal. I'll just fix it. Well, you won't because this is spring steel. When you go to bend it, it's just going to break. So let's go to a different route. Uh, Go to your local hardware store and find some rope pulleys and bring your tape measure and make sure they measure across an inch and a half. Now, I've got some links uh, to show you where to buy this stuff if you can't find it locally. So just go to the information section of my video and you'll see those links. But, you know, you're going to have to bring this over to your bench grinder and grind off that rivet and get that pulley out of there. And then you're going to have to take a 15 30 seconds bit and drill that out so it fits over the, uh, the shaft now that's the measurement for a rigid if it isn't the same on your drill press just measure it and uh, you're gonna you're gonna drill out a hair bigger so it slips right over it you're not worried about threading it on here we are drilling that out uh, I used a couple pieces of leather here so I wouldn't ding up the outsides of my pulley and cause a problem down the road and we're also going to have to drill uh, a sixteenth of an inch hole at an angle and that's going to allow us to uh, install this uh, modern nano cord uh, or micro cord they call it into here to make this repair so make sure you drill that at an angle just don't uh, drill straight down because you're going to have to have an area where you can tie a knot and it's uh, still going to miss that nut going on this uh, shaft that the pulley's going to go on to. You're going to need a, a half inch star washer, I call it, and that's going to keep that pulley from moving after you tighten it down uh, with the uh, two factory OEM nuts. You're going to need a spring. Now this spring is six inches long and five eighths inches wide. Uh, this particular one's made by Gardner. It's called a V21C. Uh, I've got links for that too. Uh, if you want to go out and find something different, just make sure you stay within spec on the size. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay, here's a, here's a picture of the first version of my repair. And I was so proud of myself. I, I was using a 100-pound stainless steel stranded uh, picture frame wire. And uh, it worked great for about the first 50 pulls. And then it started to splinter. And, you know, that's what failure does. It makes us move on and find a better solution. And that's what we did. Uh, you can see where that side hole there, uh, you know, I had it tied off so it wouldn't slip through. But let's let's find out the better solution here uh, after I yanked that video off of YouTube after it started to fail. And here we go. Here's the, the new replacement. Uh, I learned this trick uh, from my son. I was at his house in Boston and he showed me a repair he did on a garage spring and um, he had some fancy uh, uh, paratrooper cord attached to the spring and he proceeded to explain to me that it was actually stronger than steel and you know us old timers we do everything in wood and steel and rivets and bolts so of course I didn't believe him but you know I did some research and he was absolutely correct uh, I'll show you a link later on that but uh, this nano cord uh, or micro cord I think they refer to it as on the uh, the site where I bought it, it's 1.18 in uh, diameter and it's got a hundred pound strength. And the beauty of this, compared to any other wire, is is it's super flexible. So it'll go around this pulley back and forth uh, numerous times, and, and it won't it won't affect it as long as it's not chafing on any you know nicks or burrs we have in the pulley. It's going to last a long time. And if you look closely here too, I, I did maintain some of my stainless wire for this purpose. This uh, wire goes through the spring 
and wraps all the way around. Uh, I'll show you that in another picture. But uh, this is for safety purposes. If this cord ever breaks or that spring ever breaks, we don't want that spring hitting us in the eye while we're using the drill press. So this safety cable is just like a uh, garage door spring. It goes right down the center of it. And if anything breaks, rope or spring, you know, this is going to lurch forward an inch or two, but it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to fly into our head. So that's the whole purpose of that. So you will need some uh, picture wire for that. And uh, here's the stuff you want to buy. Now, this is Atwood Rope Company. I bought from them before when I was making toboggans. They make pretty good product, and it's made in the USA, which makes it even better. And it's, it's very affordable. Uh, I'll show you a link for that later. But uh, you got to make sure uh, when you're tying your loops or whatever, I like to double it up in a loop and then tie it. It gives me a bigger knot, so it won't go through the hole. And anytime you cut that, you got to make sure you use a... Uh, a lighter and uh, burn the end off so it doesn't fray. We don't want to uh, give that the chance to fray down to the knot. So, And here's a real close-up of it. Uh, it's just amazing uh, the uh, strength that this cord has and I'm thoroughly impressed with it. Uh, we're going to wrap up this portion of the video and I'm going to show you a final video of the product in action and the repair in action. So. Let's, uh, let's break it off until that next video, and we'll see you here in a second. Okay, so here's our old spring and our housing that went on there, and we took that off, and all we had to do was uh, mount our pulley on there. Now, keep in mind that we had to take up some space because the housing was missing, so I took a half-inch nut and drilled it out with a 15 16 bit, so it would just slide over the shaft. And, that way, when I go to tighten that nut on the back side, that black one there, it wasn't going to interfere because it was the same size as the OEM nuts that were on there. And uh, you put your star your nut, and uh, then your star washer, and then uh, your pulley, and then this nut, and tighten it up. Now, uh, you got to remember that uh, the original spring went into a slot on the shaft. So all I did was I, I took a pair of vice grips and a pair of pliers and broke off a small piece small enough to fit in that slot and the reason I did that is, is if we didn't do that and took up that space and if we over tighten that nut it would probably make that shaft collapse and strip out the thread so remember to do that that's important you can also see the hole we drilled on an angle and uh, that's going to allow us to slip our uh, nano paracord in there and make sure now when you uh, when you go to uh, tie your knot, you know, double it over in a loop, and uh, and then take a, a lighter and burn the end so you don't uh, have it free on you, and uh, stick that through the hole and wrap it around five times before you go to your spring. And what I did was is I had my spring already mounted, and I wrapped it around it and I I pulled it tight enough so uh, my spindle would retract. And once I knew how, uh, how tight that rope had to be, I just took a magic marker and I marked it there and then I released the tension, uh, doubled up my uh, paracord again, made a knot, and uh, you can see here I forgot to, uh, to burn this off so it doesn't fray, so let's do it now. And there you go, that won't, uh, that won't fray on us now and uh, and that's it you know as far as where the spring is attached all you do is drill a small hole uh, on your electrical box here and that thing is mounted really strong probably at least two screws in there so that's not going anywhere and uh, and this cable here this is your safety cable this is just like a garage door opener this safety cable I, I wrapped one end around here where there was a nut for the housing and uh, I put a flat washer too so it wouldn't come off and then it goes all the way through the spring and then it comes around the back side of that housing and wraps around here and what that's for is in the event that this paracord were to break uh, or the spring were to break instead of the spring flying back and hitting you in the noggin uh, it'll just come forward a, a couple inches and stop because it's it's got this cable inside of it so so, you know, you've got a little safer setup here. And that's it, you know, and uh, 
And now you've, you've got a um, spindle return spring that works perfectly and you never have to worry about tracking down parts again. Keep in mind, you know, this is for a rigid um, drill press, but they're all made pretty much the same way with those springs. So you can apply this to pretty much any drill press out there. And that'll do it for this video. If you liked it, I hope you subscribe to my Pompano Brownie channel, and we'll see you next video.